Hello and welcome to the Tray Bakes and More cooking channel. I'm Callie and today I don't have a tray bake for you. I have, I guess, a little tart, a mini tartlet for you. These are marshmallow fudge tartlets. So what it is, is a pastry case, a little pastry shell filled with jam, with marshmallow and with caramel. So technically they're caramel jam marshmallow tartlets, but that's a bit of a mouthful. So we're going to stick with marshmallow fudge tartlets. Anyway, you can either fill these with a marshmallow, a cut up marshmallow, or with marshmallow fluff. As you can see, these ones are made with marshmallows, and these ones are made with marshmallow fluff, which gives you a smoother topping, whichever you prefer. This is the traditional look. These ones I've adapted because, you know, I live in New England now, so we have fluff over here, and it's quite popular. Anyway, sticky, ooey, gooey, sweet, delicious marshmallow fudge tartlets. Right, before we talk oven temperatures, before we talk ingredients, although these are the ingredients, we need to talk pastry. You need to make your pastry a little bit in advance. So you need a bit of preparation here because this needs to go into the fridge for say 30 minutes or so um, before you roll it out and line your tins and bake it. So to make the pastry, try not to be too daunted. You can use ready-made pastry. I don't mind if you do, but if you want to make your own, it's very simple. I have flour and butter in my bowl. So I'm going to rub these together with my fingertips, just little rub, rub, rub like that until I get this to look like coarse breadcrumbs. Then I'm going to stir through the sugar. I have powdered sugar here, icing sugar. And then to bind it all together, I have one egg yolk. And you probably need a teaspoon of cold water. You might need a little bit more water. It's one of those things. Pastry is one of those things. It depends on your flour. It depends on the humidity where you are or the elevation that you live at. All these things can influence your pastry. So. Add a teaspoon of cold water with the egg yolk and then add a little bit more if it still steams dry. I'll talk a bit more about that when we get to it. But flour, butter, icing sugar and egg, that's your pastry. We're going to make the pastry, wrap it up in cling film and pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes or so um, and then we'll get to bake the pastry. So then you have a coarse breadcrumbs. You can just give it a bit of a shake or shake your bowl. Shake with your fingers there and some of the larger lumps of butter that might still be in there will come to the top and you can just rub those to get the whole thing a little bit more uniform but don't worry if there are a couple of pieces that are larger than some of the others. Right, I'm just going to wash my hands now and then we'll get to the sugar and the egg. Right, so first of all I'm going to mix the icing sugar through this just to make sure everything's nicely incorporated and then go to the wet ingredients. Now at this stage, it's actually easier just to get in with your hands and start to like bring this together with your hands. I'm just gonna grab a knife I have off to one side, scrape that off my spatula. So don't be tempted to add water too soon to this. If you're looking at, looking at this now and thinking like, ooh, that might need a bit more water. Once you bring this together, Once you get your hands in there, it can feel a bit more damp than it looks. Saying that, I do think I might need a little bit more water, but not very much. A minute. Look at that. Even I was wrong. Did not need any extra water. So that has come together nicely. That actually feels pretty good now. It's quite a soft dough, which is why also you need to put it in the fridge. So. Here we go, proving myself wrong. I did not need any extra water in that. Also proving to you, just bear with it and keep mixing and don't add water too soon because you might find out that your pastry dough is actually fine after all. Um, and you don't want them to have the extra water and have your dough too sticky and too wet. So I'm just gonna wrap this up and put it in my fridge for 30 minutes and then I'll roll it out and line my little tart tins. Okay, my pastry has been in the fridge for 30 minutes. I have preheated my oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 160 degrees centigrade for a conventional oven. Adjust your temperature. If you have a fan assisted oven, you're gonna to need to reduce that temperature. And I have rolled out my pastry dough. Flour your work surface well. It's quite a soft dough. Um, if you have a bench scraper or a palette knife or something like that, they're really useful also for getting underneath the little circles to lift them up and transfer them into 
your little tart tin, little bun tin, bun tray is what I have here. So I have cut out my circles. I have lined my uh, bun tray here. It's one thing I find quite useful sometimes, if you wanna try, you wanna try and push this in to line the tray, and you know, if you're worried about puncturing the pastry with your nails or your fingers or something, another little bit of pastry, just to dab in around that, will help to push it into your tray nicely without tearing it or ripping it. You want to just pierce it a few times with the fork. We're just trying to stop this rising up. There's no raising agent in this, but it will still puff up a little bit when it's in the oven. Also, you can use baking beans or pie weights if you have those. Just scrunch up a piece of baking parchment and put those in. You will need to remove these a little bit before the cases are cooked just to make sure that that bottom gets cooked properly because you don't want you know a soggy bottom and your filling falling out. But anyway, here we go. Uh, roll out the pastry to about half a centimetre thick, thereabouts. You should get at least 12. I've got 14 today. There's two more sitting off to the side. Sometimes I get a little bit more than that. It just varies. Sometimes I don't always roll mine out uniformly either. But anyway, this is going to go in the oven um, until they're nice and golden. And then we're going to transfer them to a wire rack to cool and we'll get on with the filling. 20 minutes in the oven. These came out nice and golden and crisp. They're not totally crisp when you take them out of the oven but they will crisp up a little bit more. But anyway, you want to bake them until they are looking nice and golden and bright. The two that I had actually on a separate tray, and the 12 and the one tray. So these two here, I didn't put the baking beans in those, so they did puff up a bit. One thing I sometimes do, and I would say just be very gentle and very careful if you do this, if you see it start to puff up, just take them out of the oven and push it down very, very gently with your finger, and you can push it back a little bit. But honestly, once you get the filling in there as well, you know, you don't notice it so much anyway, unless someone's gonna like tip it up and try and look at the base and then the filling will fall out. Anyway, the ones with the pie weights, I find, you know, they didn't puff up, but it does push the pastry around a little bit. At least they do for me. I don't know, somebody maybe more particular than me can get these to look pretty as well. Either way, they look a little bit more rustic, but they didn't puff up, so these are nice and deep and will take lots of filling. So to talk about the filling, jam. At the minute, there's a teaspoon of jam in the bottom of each of these. I've used raspberry jam. You can use whatever jam you want. Right, so the next thing we're going to put in here is marshmallow. Um, they are marshmallow fudge tartlets. The traditional option is to use half of a large marshmallow. So just regular sized marshmallow. See, they're really sticky. They will try and stick to each other as you try and do this. Put in half of a marshmallow, and then we put the caramel over the top. Because I live in New England and this stuff, marshmallow fluff, it's quite common over here. I experimented and put some of this in. And it is also really tasty. It is more ooey, it is more gooey, it will drip when you bite into it. But sometimes that can be a good thing. So, marshmallow fluff, if you have it, if you want to try it, it will mean a much more smoother top to your finished tart. If you use the half cut up marshmallow, you will be able to see that through the caramel. Anyway, I'm gonna do some of these, about half of these with the marshmallows, half of them with the fluff, and then we'll talk caramel. Right, so here they are, about half of them with the cut up marshmallows, which will be more visible, and you'll be able to see that through the caramel. And then I've got half of these with the fluff. Super, super sticky, use two spoons, or you know, if you're not filming this for the internet, you can just use your finger to scrape it off, and then you've got a really sticky marshmallow fluff finger. But anyway, this will spread a little bit as it sits, but you can give it a bit of a helping hand just to try and flatten it out a bit before you pour the caramel on. Talking of caramel, let's get on to that next. So the final layer going on these tartlets is the caramel layer. It is essentially the same sort of caramel you would make for a caramel square. So I have sugar, I have dark brown sugar here. I've made this in the past with white sugar as well. So if you don't have the dark sugar, dark brown sugar, don't worry. So sugar, butter, condensed milk, and golden syrup. There's half a can of condensed milk. Those cans that come these days that are about 14 ounces or 390 something grams. You, so you want about half of that. Um, and we're just gonna melt this over a gentle heat, on a low heat on your stove. Stir it pretty frequently, get everything going there, and then um, let it bubble away for a couple of minutes once it gets up to a simmer. Uh, be careful with it, stir it fairly frequently. You don't want this to catch on the bottom of your saucepan. And once it's thickened up a bit, um, you'll start to see a trail left in it as you pull the spoon through that. You'll see that it leaves a little bit of a, a gap and a trail through the caramel. It will darken, it will smell wonderful. It will look great. And then we're just gonna pour that over the top of the tartlets. Here we go, we can see this. This is thickened up. There's a bit more of a trail 
left behind if you run your spoon through this. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes over a gentle heat with lots of stirring. It smells amazing. I'm just gonna swap to a slightly different spoon with this. I'm gonna try and do this all in one take because I wanna get this on while it's still warm. Be very, very careful with this because it is hot sugar and that will hurt if you get that on your skin. Um, so just spoonful of this, fill up the tartlets. It'll melt a little bit on the marshmallows. And there you go with your marshmallow fudge tartlets. Here you go, work quickly, work carefully, hot caramel. Some of these you can see, I haven't filled maybe just as much as some of the others, so you can definitely see the marshmallow in these. If that's the look you're going for, do that. If you're going for more caramel, then you know overload it as much as you can without spilling. But here you go, the, the flatter top ones have the fluff in them. These where you can see the marshmallow, that's it. So we're just gonna set these to one side and let these uh, just firm up and set a little bit more and cool as well, because again, we're still dealing with warm caramel here. Any caramel you have left over, just scrape that out of your pan. You can put that in a little pot in the fridge, pour it over some ice cream or scoop it up with a spoon, whatever way you want to do with it. But um, here we go, marshmallow fudge tartlets. So keep an eye out for more recipes. Subscribe to my channel, tell your family and friends, and I'll see you again soon and try to bake some more.